Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to look at the second half of word two, or I should, no, not word two, subframe two, words six through ten. And again, notice that sub, uh, subframe two and three contain the ephemeris data. So what else does the subframe two contain? Well, it contains the following parameters, the CUC, the CUS, E, the square root of A, T sub OE, and the AODE. Well, what are those things? Well, first of all, the CUC is what we call the amplitude of the cosine harmonic correction term to the argument of latitude. So you can see that because we don't have a perfectly um, circular orbit, we have an uh, orbit that has some eccentricity, there's going to be a what we call a sine function or cosine function correction factor that we're going to need and we're going to need the amplitude of that cosine harmonic correction term so CUC gives you that amplitude of that correction term and CUS gives you the amplitude of the sine harmonic correction term which is contained in word 8 so word 6 has the CUC and word 8 has the CUS so then we have a lot of room for the eccentricity we have 8 bits in word 6 and 24 bits in word 7. Notice 24 bits is a totality of all the bits in a word that could be used because you always need 6 bits for the parity bit just to make sure that the transmission of each word was correct. That's the eccentricity of the orbit of the satellite that's transmitting the ephemeris data so it's for that satellite alone and we have allocated 32 bits for that which is always an indicator that we want that data to be extremely accurate to as many significant figures as we can. Then we also have, I believe, 32 bits, do we have? Yes, we have also have 32 bits, I didn't write that, but I should. Uh, 32 bits allocated for the square root of A, which is the square root of the semi-major axis, which is the average distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite. And since we have a elliptical orbit, of course, we're going to have a semi-minor semi and a semi-major axis. The semi-major axis gives you the average distance. It knows we want to know that extremely accurately. And again, we have 8 bits in word 8 and 24 bits in word 9 to allocate uh, for that data. And we want that data, again, as accurately as possible to as many significant figures as we possibly can. Then we have the TOE, and you might remember from a few videos back that that was going to be compared to the TOC. We want to make sure that's the same so that we're in sync. That's called the time of ephemeris. And then finally we have the AODE, which is the age of the data offset. Well, what is that used for? Well, it's to, to determine the validity time for the NMCT data and subframe 4 of that particular transmitting SV. So we're setting, uh, we're comparing the data offset, the age of the data offset of the AODE. Uh, I'll take that back. So the AODE is the age of the data offset. We want to see how much the data has aged compared when we compare the, uh, the ephemeris data to the data in the almanac in order to be, be able to ve verify and validate that we have the correct information for the transmitting SV. So that's the information that is then contained in the second half of subframe 2. And now we're ready to go to subframe 3 to see what's contained in that. Again, more ephemeris data. And then later on, we're going to look at each of the particular items in the data, in the ephemeris data, and take a look at the size and what it means and what it's used for and so forth. So that's all coming up. Right now, we just want to get a general overview where they're located, in which subframe, how many bits it takes up, and what at least the definitions are of those various components. So that is how it's done.